Today we're looking again at the digital discovery made by Digilent uh, Corporation and uh, the I have previously done videos on this and uh, most recently did a video on uh, why I didn't use the digital uh, discovery in connection with the MSO 5000, which uh, I plan to post this video after that one. So uh, if you've already watched that one, you know what I'm talking about. But on the screen uh, is the, the digital discovery displaying 24 uh, digital signals. And one of the advantages of the digital discovery over uh, the MSO 5000, and by the way, the same is true of the the earlier uh, Regal uh, logic analyzers. Like I have uh, one for the uh, for the MSO uh, 10 uh, thousand series or 1000 series, 1000 Z series. Those only will do 16 channels. So if you look at the display you'll see that the uh, bottom data in 0 to data in uh, 15 are the first 16 uh, data inputs, digital data inputs. Then above that uh, are, is another set, and notice that this, this top set of eight is not synchronized to the bottom set. So why am I showing all this? The, well, first, I like to, to uh, show the capabilities of various instruments for people that might be interested in buying them. And while I have no connection with Digiland or with any of the other uh, Regal or any of the other companies that whose products I sometimes uh, use, the uh, there is an advantage to the digital discovery over the Regal, which is that you can use these additional inputs. However, in a situation where these inputs and these inputs are not synchronized, as you notice, you don't get uh, a synchronization between the two. Now what I'm going to do is do a stop and there you see you do have a snapshot of 24 digital signals. So what might those be? Well in, in some uh, systems you might have a 16-bit address bus for example and an 8-bit data bus or another way to put it is two bytes of address, one byte of data. That's a very common format for uh, microcomputers and, uh, and microprocessors. The nice thing about the uh, digital discovery is it lets you look at all 24 bits, whereas on the uh, Regal and, and frankly I think almost all uh, mixed signal oscilloscopes, you generally are limited to only 16 channels. So one of the reasons that I wanted to use this with the MSO 5000 was I previously have been using this with another Regal oscilloscope, a uh, DS4000. And uh, so I wanted to talk about that in a little bit. Uh, but first, uh, let me give you a little bit of uh, introduction and then let me finish by explaining how I might uh, or how I have been using the digital discovery in connection with a different oscilloscope and why that one works and the MSO 5000 uh, doesn't work. And, and by doesn't work, I mean doesn't work as well. So here is the DS4000 oscilloscope, which I've owned for some time. It's, a, it's an upgraded version with 500 megahertz of uh, bandwidth. It's a much more expensive scope than the MSO5000. Uh, it's been around a while. 
basically, I think, now I've never used a DS7000, but I think the DS7000 from Regal is, has uh, very similar specs to this scope, but all of the features of the MSO5000, which, uh, as you've seen in the videos I've done, are, can be considerable. But what I wanted to focus on uh, today is why you might want to use a logic analyzer with a scope like this. If we look over here to the right at the available triggers, let me zoom in on that a little bit. You see that, among other things, this scope has a USB trigger. Now, it's got a lot of the others that you've seen on the MSO5000 if you've watched those videos. But it has a USB uh, trigger. And the, the way that you can use a scope with a logic analyzer is this. You set up the scope to trigger, for example, on a USB uh, connection or a USB protocol. Then you use the trigger out of the scope to trigger the logic analyzer and you connect the logic analyzer to a number of points in, in your embedded system that lets you see the relationship between what is being received or sent over the USB bus and what is going on elsewhere in the embedded system at the same time. In other words, it allows you to use the superior trigger capabilities of this uh, uh, oscilloscope, which the USB trigger in this uh, DS4000 is pretty good. It's, it's quite stable and I've used it uh, successfully on many projects. But you do not find USB triggers on most logic analyzers, at least not uh, logic analyzers used by people in home labs and things like that. Now, of course, there are very expensive logic analyzers that cost uh, many thousands of dollars that have USB trigger capabilities built into them. But what I'm trying to show is how you can, if you will, pair an oscilloscope with superior triggering capabilities with a logic analyzer like the Digital Discovery uh, that have often superior uh, digital display capabilities. One of the things that, that really matters is how synchronized you are when you use the trigger out. So if we trigger on USB and then use the trigger out of the DS4000, how much delay is there between a signal occurring on the USB bus that causes the trigger and the output of the trigger output of the scope which you're using to trigger the logic analyzer? Here, for example, is the trigger out of the DS4000 and this is what I'm more used to with the oscilloscopes. Notice that we are at 20 nanoseconds per division. Here is the trigger in or the trigger the, the trigger level on the input signal and notice it's triggering at this point and 40 nanoseconds later the trigger out uh, goes high. So there is a 40 nanosecond delay between the trigger point on, the, uh, on a channel of the oscilloscope and the output from the trigger out connector. Uh, as we saw in a previous video, that, that is quite a bit longer with the MSO5000. And because I was used to this, uh, this kind of behavior, I was anticipating that the MSO5000 might have uh, 50 or 60 nanoseconds of delay, but not uh, the, the long delay that it does have. Now understand, there are ways to compensate for the delay, at least in certain circumstances and so on. But fundamentally, 
you would like the trigger out to occur at exactly the same time as the trigger point on the scope. Some even more expensive scopes than the 4000 have delay circuitry in them that automatically delays the trigger of the oscilloscope itself uh, so that everything is coincident. But I won't get into that. Those are generally expensive scopes in the, in the uh, many thousands of dollars uh, range. So uh, this is a workable amount for most systems. Uh, remember that we're, we're looking for something where the, uh, the, the errors, if you will, in the measurements uh, are down in the single digit percentages of the clock pulse itself. So let's take a look at, uh, at some of those values and you can kind of get an idea of how much you can tolerate between these two and still use the trigger out uh, with an external instrument. So here are, uh, is a chart that I prepared. The, on the left is a column of clock speeds from 1 megahertz to 200 megahertz. And then each uh, column from left to right is the amount of error that uh, timing error for that clock speed. So, for example, at a megahertz, a 1% timing error would be 10 nanoseconds. So, as you uh, may recall, the, uh, we got uh, about 40 nanoseconds with the uh, DS4000 and we got about, uh, well, 200 and something, more than 200 nanoseconds with the, uh, the MSO5000. So notice that 200 nanoseconds with a 1 megahertz clock is a 20% error. Now, of course, as long as you account for that timing difference, since it is systematic, in other words, you'll get the same delay for all uh, trigger signals, the uh, you can you can uh, if you will zero that out in your calculations. But my experience is when you're working on a project, it's very easy to forget to put in the correction, and so it's better if you have a system that operates within your error bounds and. So as a result, if we chose the 40 nanosecond error of the, uh, of the DS4000 or 40 nanosecond delay, that would mean that if you're willing to tolerate 20% uh, timing error, that you could use that up to 5 megahertz without correction. If, you want to, if your clock went above 5 megahertz, you'd want to correct for that. Now, uh, Obviously, if you want to go to uh, these higher frequencies, the uh, MSO5000 that we're using has a 70 megahertz limit, so of course it would not even uh, operate well in these ranges. The DS4000 that I showed you is a 500 megahertz scope, so it would work up to here. But as you can see, your timing error would represent uh, a significant part. And by timing error, I mean timing displacement. So this gives you some idea of what we're going to be working with when we try to use this with an external instrument and use the trigger output. So let's suppose that you're working on an embedded system and you know that when you send a particular set of signals over the USB bus to that embedded system that something goes wrong but you don't know exactly what's going on and so what you would like to do is you would like to synchronize to that uh, packet coming over the USB connection with the digital signals inside the embedded system. So you decide well I'll use my digital discovery to do that To add a 
USB bus to the digital discovery, we click on plus right here, and then we look down here for the USB bus. Well, we don't see it. We have CAN bus, we have UART, I2C, SPI, uh, so how are we going to trigger? Well, one way would be to write a macro for the digital discovery that uh, using the, uh, the software development tools that come with the digital discovery, you can write macros that you can execute to decode a USB bus. But there might be a simpler way. So here is an alternative. What we have is the USB bus on the left, the embedded system. We've connected our logic analyzer to the embedded system, and we connect the scope to the USB bus because the scope has a USB uh, trigger built in. It will automatically uh, produce a trigger out whenever a specified USB uh, condition occurs. Now you have a signal which synchronizes what's going on on the USB bus and you can use that signal to trigger the logic analyzer. The logic analyzer of course then gathers data out of your embedded system and displays it on the computer. Now of course the logic analyzer can also show the trigger out and you could also have connections over here to the USB where you're simply monitoring the value of the USB bus not necessarily using it to trigger. That way you don't have to write a macro for the logic analyzer. You can use the uh, triggering circuitry inside the oscilloscope to trigger on a USB event and then do the analysis in your logic analyzer. So this is one of the ways that I've used the DS4000 in the past and I was hoping to be able to do the same thing with the MSO5000. Now you can still do that but as we saw in uh, a little bit earlier in this video it depends on how much error you're willing to tolerate between the occurrence of the USB signal and the occurrence of the trigger out. And that of course depends in part on how fast your system is running. If your system is running slow, for example, if you're running a 1 megahertz clock in your embedded system, then you may not care about the, the 200 and something nanosecond delay in the MSO5000. But you still need to account for it in the displayed results. So I hope this has been a, a useful digression from our uh, long <laughs> and, and perhaps tortuous uh, journey through the use of the MSO5000 in embedded systems. But this is actually a more generic uh, method because any scope that has a trigger uh, available, if the trigger output occurs within the error specifications that you're willing to live with with your embedded system, then it can be used in addition to or in conjunction with a logic analyzer or another piece of test equipment. I don't plan to pursue this particular area very much further, but I hope that you've been uh, found something useful in this video and look forward to some others on perhaps some other topics. In the meantime, as always, stay safe and have a nice day.